Hey everybody, while everybody's stuck at home um, and in their homes, we wanted to take the time and do a series that really celebrates the beauty of home and the world that surrounds us every day. And so today I just wanted to take a minute and you know, take some art that I have in my own house and talk about ways of displaying it, ways that we can frame pieces of art and um, things that you can do at home even with your little ones. So why don't we just start with this Lauren Collin piece, which is so beautiful. You have to see the detail on this. This is an artist out of France. So here we did a typical float on top of um, mat board. And you can even see only one side has the deckled edge. And I really wanted to display this just using a clean, fresh white frame. Um, here's another example of doing that exact thing. Oh, I love that too, John. This, on this Cecil Touchon piece, they had deckled the edge all the way around, and so we found this really sleek matte frame and floated it. The other day, we walked around the neighborhood and walked around our, our yard and found different leaves and are pressing them in a book. And so what I'm gonna do is buy some paper, deckle the edge like that, and just lay them. And typically what you do, once you have this sheet of paper that you're gonna layer over, you float it with some standoffs behind. Ideas of things you can float if you don't necessarily have a painting on hand. You can pull out your favorite page of your kid's book. It can be your favorite piece of sheet music. It could be a, a love letter that you got way back when. So be creative. This piece here is a shadow box. I actually found this at Target. Um, and I layered the back with a piece of linen that I had. <laughs> and then we took a mold of his baby sister's foot when she was born, and this hangs in her nursery. <laughs> and then we obviously have your oil paintings. And this is a gorgeous piece by Hunt Slonum that he's known for finding these antique, really beautiful, intricate frames. And you know, you can do the same thing at home where you search flea markets once we can get back out of the house again and find really beautiful frames. And then the contrast of the traditional frame done on top of a really contemporary sketch type painting is incredible. You know, just like the Hunt Slonum, the same goes for this Alexis Walter piece that's so beautiful. And if you look closely, you really see the texture on the art, which is so much a part of the beauty of the piece. And so why would you want to cover up it up with glass? So all you have to do is frame it and then you can hang it on the wall. Um, and really let that texture shine. See, if you can even look closely on this Hunt Slonum piece, how incredible his brush strokes are. Other oil paintings are typically done on canvas or on a piece of wood, and you can just let the sides just go bare and let them hang on the wall beautifully. Okay, these are more typical ex examples of just a matte frame. And you can see the thickness difference. This is like a double matte thickness versus a single. And you can really get creative. And my favorite ways to use matting are typically either oversized, off-centered, or really a unique shape. <laughs> Lastly, and to the point of framing something unique, I just love this piece here because this is an old tapestry that we found at Round Top that was framed on top of just this piece of silk. And it just adds so much richness and texture. You can layer pieces like this on top of silk, on top of linen, really on top of in, metal. In, on top of metal. That's a great. That's a great tip, John. Um, and then you secure it either using glue or you can do a, just a very slight cross stitch in the corner. Yeah. I love using pieces like this not just on the wall but even on a bookshelf or layered in front of a bookshelf. Also, we got a lot of questions about how high to hang art. And so basically the general rule is that you want your sight line to hit one third of the way down the painting. Now I'm a little bit shorter than the average person, but typically for your six foot person, you want their eyesight to hit one third down. There's exceptions to every rule. For example, this piece of art, I decided to hang a little higher so people- So you can see it. So you can see it. And so people could sit against the back wall. And, and jump on the bench. And jump on the bench. 